with Ken the Royals trying to salvage Team 3 and virtually close out the A's. The A's battling to stay alive in the American League West. Paul Mitchell against Larry Gurr. Tom Foquette getting set to step in and start it for the Royals. We hope you enjoy it. And with the play-by-play of tonight's game, my pleasure to introduce Denny Matthews. Well, thanks, Fred. Hi, everybody. A very pleasant good evening to you. And we're ready for what Whitey Herzog said is the most important game in the history of the Kansas City Royals. Boy, who'd have thought? Four games to go, a vital contest. You would think starting pitcher, and immediately you would think Steve Busby or Dennis Leonard or Paul Swidorf, at least when the year started. But no, it's left-hander Larry Gura, who wasn't even with the Royals when the season began. And, of course, for the A's at the start of the year, you'd think four games to go, or in their case, five games to go. Final game, they trail by two and a half. They have to win tonight. And you'd think by the blue, or maybe Kenny Holtzman. But no, it's right-hander Paul Mitchell. And Mitchell wasn't with the A's when the season started. Mitchell is 26 years old, ball stands 6'1", weighs 195. It'll be Tom Pochette, Amos Otis, and George Brett in that order. Dean Tennis throw down to second base. Around the horn she goes, and we're set for an evening of baseball. Tom Pochette hitting 302 with two home runs, 33 RBIs. For Paul Mitchell, this is only his third start since the 25th of August. He suffered an attack of tendonitis in his right shoulder. So the A's will keep a very close eye on Paul Mitchell. And, of course, Roland Fingers may be very prominent in the ballgame. The first pitch to Pochette is hit to left field. Back goes Joe Rudy. He's there to make the catch, and there's one away. Tom Pochette going after Mitchell's first pitch. Flies to left. So one away, and here's Amos Otis. Amos back in the lineup. He's hitting 279. 17 home runs, 84 RBIs. Amos is hitting 288 against the A's. The American win leader in doubles is Otis. Amos with 39. Paul Mitchell brings it home. Bouncing ball foul outside third base. Knocked down and fumbled momentarily by third base umpire Ron Luciano, who in mock disgust kicks foot at the dirt. Ron thought he should have fielded the ball cleanly. Chuck Tanner, the A's manager, out of the dugout and talking to plate umpire Al Clark. And I think what he's talking about is where Otis is standing in the batter spot. The A's have long contended that Amos Otis plants his right foot out of the batter spot. And Amos offering his bat to the plate umpire who draws the line. And in comes Phil Haller from second base. He's the second base umpire. And he's going to draw the line himself. He is the umpire in chief. He is in charge of this game, Bill Haller. And Bill is going to leave nothing to chance. He's going to do it himself, and he came all the way in from second base to do it. So there can be no argument now. No balls and a strike on Otis. Back comes Mitchell. Slider down and away. One ball and one strike. Ball game has just started. Tom Pochette has flied out to Joe Rudy in left field. Rudy, North, and Baylor in the outfield. Bando, Campanaris, Garner, and Fairley, the A's infield. Breaking ball, outside corner to me to make out one and two. Mitchell came to the A's from Baltimore. That was the Don Baylor, Reggie Jackson deal. The one two pitch. Struck him out. He did not have a good cut. Mitchell keeping the ball away from Otis, and down he goes. So two away, and here's George Brett. George hitting 330 with six homers and 64 runs batted in. Brett hitting 236 against the A's. As you know, left hand batter. An overhand curve, and he took something off and found the strike zone. 0 1. So Mitchell. Showing Brett a change-up curveball. And he got it over in the count 0 1. Brett leads the American League in hit. Foul back and out of play in the count 0 2. So Mitchell throwing strike. George also leads the American League in triples with 14 and in total bases. He is second to Hal McCray in hitting. Nobody aboard, two outs, top half of the first. Right-hander Paul Mitchell ready. Here he comes. 
Fast ball down and away from Brett. One and two. Mitchell Blast's appearance on September the 24th resulted in no decision. He pitched against Chicago. The A's lost the game. He went six and a third innings and gave up five hits. Brett hits the tapper past the mound. Garner, the second baseman, charges. Quick throw in time. Side to tire. So the Royals go down one, two, three. And after half an inning, Royals nothing. He's coming up. Well, everything was coming up roses in Atlanta, Georgia, for John Montefusco, who has pitched the Major League's fourth no-hitter of the season. It was the first of his career as the Giants blasted the Braves nine to nothing. Montefusco struck out four and walked only one. Jerry Royster, who led off the fourth inning. The last time Montefusco had faced the Braves on August 6th, he predicted that Willie Montanez would not get a base hit off him the rest of the year. And he made good that boast by not only blanking Montanez, but the entire Braves roster the next time he faced him, and that was in the ball game. And in fact, nobody even came close to a hit. Only 1,359 fans were in attendance, but as you might imagine, probably 50,000 will say they were there come the open of business around Atlanta, Georgia, Thursday morning. Many of the fans were shouting, no hitter, no hitter, at Montefusco as he crouched in the batter circle waiting to bat in the eighth inning. Montefusco was the National League Rookie of the Year in 1975 when he won 15 and lost nine. He has predicted that sometime he'll win the league's Cy Young Award. The first four batters to face Montefusco all hit fly balls to the outfield. And the righty then got the next five on grounders before walking Royster in the fourth. Montefusco did not strike out a bat until he got rookie Dale Murray in the third out there in the fifth inning. So John Montefusco, a no-hitter for the Giants as San Francisco beats Atlanta 9-0. He's come to bat in the bottom of the first, no score. And the Royal Hopes tonight rest on the left arm of Larry Gura. Larry making his second start of the year. This will be his fourth appearance against the A's. career record against Oakland. He has three wins and no losses with the league and an ERA of 2.79. Bill North leads off. Bill, a switch hitter. He'll be up there right-handed. North hitting 280. Two homers, 31 RBI. So North, Campanaris, and Rudy in that order. Larry Gura ready. His pitch, breaking ball, is lifted into left center. Otis to his right, calling for the ball, makes the catch. So just like Tom Post at the Royals leadoff man, the A's leadoff hitter, Bill North, flies out. Up comes Bert Campanaris, the shortstop. Campanaris hitting 259. One home run, 52 RBI. Zora works in a fastball for a strike on one. Larry's best outing against the A's on July the 25th here in the Oakland Coliseum. He went three innings, allowing just two hits. But he struck out six. Fastball into tight in the count one and one. Not only did he strike out six, but he struck out five in a row. Then he walked the batter, then he struck out another. The one one pitch to Campanaris is a fastball high two and one. Larry's only start was in Chicago on the 7th of August. The Royals lost to the White Sox five to three, but Gura was not the pitcher of record. Breaking ball loops to right field. Collins is right there, makes the catch, and there are two gone. So North and Campanaris are both fly to the outfield, and here's Joe Rudy. Joe was the savior for the A's last night defensively. Sal Bando's home run in the seventh provided the A's with the only run of the ball game. And Mike Torres, two hit pitching, took care of the mound duty, and the A's had a one to nothing win. So it was Rudy, Bando, and Torres last night. And we'll see about tonight. Torres pitch to the right-hand batter. Good breaking ball for a strike. Rudy hitting 274. Joe has 94 RBIs and 13 home runs. Sign given by John Watson. by Larry the pitch. Fastball outside corner. Well thrown in the count on two. In good start against the White Sox, he went six innings, allowed seven hits and two runs. He struck out two and walked two. 
That is his only start of the year up till tonight. So quite a burden for the Royal left-hander. The 0-2 pitch. Fouled away by Joe Rudy. Joe just protecting the play behind him. The count as he is going to. The Royal pitching staff has handled Joe Rudy extremely well. Joe hitting 274 with the lead, but against the Royals, he's hitting only 127. The 0-2 pitch. Fast ball away. One ball, two strikes. Of course, as little as Rudy has hit against the Royals, Sal Bando has more than made up for it. One ball, two strikes to Rudy. Base is empty, two out. Swung late and fouled away. Zora that time came in with a fastball. The Royals play Minnesota Friday night, Saturday and Sunday afternoons at Royal Stadium. Meanwhile, here in the Coliseum, the A's will play host to the Angels. That's a three-game series. One and two to Joe Rudy. Dora brings it home. Curveball has popped up. Short right field. Out goes Rojas and Cookie makes the catch to retire the side. So like the Royals, the A's go down one, two, three in the first inning. And after one, no score. Dodgers players appeared genuinely pleased Wednesday night with the appointment of Tommy Lasorda as manager to replace retiring Walter Alston. Lasorda managed many of the younger stars in the minors and said of them, I love my players very much. As they prepared to play Houston, the following comments were made. Davey Lope saying he was not surprised. It was a matter of formality. He said Lasorda has been loyal to the club for 28 years and the club showed his appreciation. He said, I played for Lasorda in the minors in Spokane and Albuquerque for three years and I'll know. I know he'll do a good job. Steve Garvey said that during the time I played for Tommy when he was managing, we won two minor leagues and the Winter League Championships, and he says, I know as well as I know anything that he's the right man. Bill Russell saying that I think Lasorda has all the qualifications for the job. He has worked hard. He knows the players, and it was a good choice. So the Dodger players quite happy over the naming of Tommy Lasorda as manager to replace Walt Austin at Los Angeles. The American League's leading hitter will start things off for the Royals, Hal McCray. He'll be followed by John Mayberry and Al Collins. No score after one inning. Al McCray hitting 334 with eight homers and 72 RBIs. In addition to leading the league in hitting, he is second in the American League in doubles with 34, and he's been in eight of his last 10 games. Al with a dozen hits, 437 at bat. We mentioned the A's will be entertaining the California Angels here on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And the A's will get Frank Tanana, an 18-game winner, Paul Hartzell, who has won seven, and who pitched very well against the A's in his last outing against the Oakland Ball Club. And then on Sunday, Nolan Ryan. So no matter what happens tonight, the A's are in for a tough series here this weekend against the Angels. Paul Mitchell pitches to Hal McCray, and Hal takes the ball, 1-0. McCray against the A's, hitting 377. 20 hits, a half a dozen RBIs. The 1 0 pitch. Ground ball, pass cap and air, space it into our field. So the first hit of the night belongs to Hal McCray, who singles to left to open the second. And up comes John Mayberry. John hitting 235, 13 homers, and 95 RBIs. He's hitting 259 against the A's. John has a dozen RBIs against Oakland. And one of the two home runs the Royals have hit against Oakland this year. Amos Otis has the other, and both Royal home runs have been hit off Stan Bonson. McCray at first draws the throw, and he's back. No score, top of the second. McCray a pretty good lead. Mitchell looking his way. The pitch to Mayberry is ripped into right center field, base hit, and McCray around second on his way to third. So John Mayberry, who before the ball game got a batting lesson from former National League batting champion and now teammate Tommy Davis, just drilled one into right center. And that is the hardest that John has hit a ball in two and a half weeks. The so runners at first and third, and the A's bullpen leaps into action. Right-hander Jim Todd begins to throw. Then he's John Mayberry did one other thing, and I know 
that you notice what it was, that kind of bat. Something he hasn't done for a long, long time. Something you picked up from Wilbur Stodgill of the Pirates, and that is pinwheeling the bat as he got into the batter's box. John did that for a long time, and he said it helped his rhythm. And then he got away from it. So maybe that's part of the answer. Here's Al Cullen. Al lines one to the first baseman into the double play. a grand slam home run, and Ellis Valentine hit a two-run homer to pace Montreal to a 7-2 victory over the Mets at Shea Stadium and the finale for the Mets. Garrett watched his sixth home run of the year off starter and loser Tom Seaver, who's 14-11, with two out in the fourth after two walks and a single loaded the bases. The Expos added another tally in the fifth on a single by uh, Pepe Freyas, a sacrifice and a double by rookie Andy Dawson. Valentine tracked his seventh homer of the season in the eighth with Dell Unser on base. Steve Rogers scattered six hits to pick up his seventh victory. As I mentioned earlier, in case you missed it, a no-hitter in the major leagues as John Montefusco nailed the Atlanta Braves with a 9 to nothing decision. He put just one batter on base, and that was a walk in the uh, fourth inning to Jerry Royster. So a no-hitter for John Montefusco. Second inning, one to nothing, Royal. 
for the A's, Gene Tennis, Sal Bando, and Don Baylor. Gene Tennis hitting 250. The right-hand hitting catcher has 22 home runs and 65 RBIs. Gene hitting 264 against the Royals. Larry Gordo retires the side in order in the first. Drifting toward left. Breaking ball way outside to tennis, 1-0. Oh. We've been telling you throughout the series, Gene Tennis with a very good eye. He's a very disciplined hitter. He will very rarely swing at a bad ball. So 1-0 oh pitch. Fastball. See if he fouled it off or not. Gene trying to get the bat back. We did get no indication from the plate umpire, Al Clark. And the scoreboard says 1-1. One Bando next. Sign given the line by Gura the pitch. A change barely missed. Two and one. Gura throws a fastball, a slider, a straight change, and sometimes a curveball. A two-one pitch. Slider swung and missed by Tennis. Gura had worked that pitch in on his hands in the count two two. Playing tennis to pull. Poquette deep and left. Otis deep in center. The 2 2 pitch. Just missed the inside corner. And boy, the Royals are angry. Mighty Herzog and Charlie Lau yelling at Al Clark, the plate umpire from the dugout. Three balls and two strikes on Gene Tennis. The 3 2 pitch. Ground ball to Brett. It was a slider. George has got it. Throw to first. Whoa! Mayberry comes up with it. So Brett hurled the throw into the ground, but Mayberry scooped it up, and there's one away. A pause for identification. This is the Royals Radio Network. This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service. Denny Matthews and Fred White at the Oakland Coliseum. one nothing Royals, bottom of the second. The pitch to Bando. Outside, ball one. Bando against the Royals. Average, 439. 25 hits. Eight home runs, including the winner last night. He has an eight-game hitting streak. The 1-0 pitch. Foul ball out of play. First base side, it's 1-1. One one. Bando against the Royals has hit safely in 16 of the 17 games. In addition to his eight home runs, he has driven in 13. He has belabored the Royals. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Hit him on the fifth with a slider. It's popped up in foul territory. And Brett has room to make the catch. Bando fouls out. Gura made a terrific pitch. He threw a slider in on Bando's fifth. And Sal all tied up. And a little pop foul off third. So there are two out and up comes Don Baylor. The right hand hitting right fielder with an average of 249. Has 15 home runs and 68 RBIs. Baylor has four homers against the Royals. 15 hits. He's hitting 250. Curveball for a strike on one. Larry Gura, a different pitcher as a starter than as a relief pitcher. The 0-1 pitch. Fastball, foul back and out of play in the count 0 2 Gura, a different pitcher because when he comes in in relief, he'll use only two pitches. His fastball and his slider. But as a starter... With a little margin for error, he'll use fastball, slider, a very good change, and that curveball. And he threw one curve to tennis. The 0-2 pitch to Baylor outside, one and two. Dora has very good command of all four of his pitches. One and two to John Baylor. Royals lead, one nothing. A's batting in the bottom of the second. There's the curveball that just missed the outside corner in the count two-two. who came to the A's from Baltimore. Two and two. Two out, nobody on. The line by Gura, the pitch. Slider in on his hands, and he pulled his foul. He was way out in front of that pitch, and the ball never fair. Two and two. 
Royal scoring in the top of the second, singles by McCray and Mayberry. Collins lined into a double play, but then with two out in McCray at third, Cookie Rojas played a perfect butt along the third baseline for an RBI single. A change close outside to Baylor, and it's the full count three and two. Cordell Washington would be next. Sign given by Wappen. And now Gura's 3-2 pitch. Foul back and out of play. Whitey Herzog, the Royal manager, watching Larry Gura from the top step of the Royal dugout, back to first. Three balls, two strikes. The A's trying to climb to within a game and a half of the Royals. The 3-2 pitch to Don Baylor. Fastball swung late and fouled down the right field line into the crowd. Baylor just protecting the plate. He had a very defensive swing that time. The A's have won five out of six and six out of eight. Meanwhile, the Royals have lost six of their last seven. So they're on a collision course. The 3-2 pitch. Reaching for a breaking ball, he pops it up and foul ground just like Vando and expects to make the catch to retire the side. So Zura making very good pitches has retired the first six A's. And after two innings of play, it's the Royals one, the A's nothing. Jackie Brown won his second game since June 29th, and the Cleveland defense reeled off four double plays Wednesday as the Indians took a 3-2 decision over the Detroit Tigers. After spotting the Tigers a 2-0 lead, the Indians bounce back with a pair of runs in the third on a run-scoring double by Rick Manning and a single by Buddy Bell. A bloop double by George Hendrick and a run-scoring single by Charlie Spikes gave the Indians a go-ahead run in the fourth, and Brown, who relieved Cleveland starter Pat Dobson in the third, picked up his ninth victory against 11 losses, but needed relief help from Stan Thomas in the sixth. Rod Carew and Mike Cubbage knocked in two runs apiece while relief ace Bill Campbell established an American League one-season record for innings pitch to pace Minnesota to a 9-1 victory over Texas. Winning pitcher Pete Redfern worked the first seven innings and combined on a five-hitter with Campbell who set the American League record of 165 and two-third innings of relief work. Well, two innings then at the Oakland Coliseum and the Royals with a 1-0 lead. One run on three hits. The Royals have played airless balls. The A's no runs, no hits, no base runners in back, and no errors. So it'll be Fred Pacek, Tom Bocat, and Amos Otis for the Royals. Here we go to the third, and for more play, here's Fred. Okay, thank you, Denny. Pacek up for the first time in the ballgame. His average, 242. Right-handed batter. He'll be followed by Bocat, Otis. Paul Mitchell getting set to work. Sal Bando playing even with a bag of third. Guarding against the bunch. Pacek halfway up in the batter's box. In a clouds waiting, Mitchell winds in the first pitch. Way high, ball one. Mitchell lost that one way upstairs. The Royals have hit Mitchell hard so far. They've scored only one run. The pitch. Ball low. And it's 2-0 and oh to Pacek. And Fred takes a look at his third base coach, Jeff Hiller. Bando still shallow at third. Garner over near the bag at second. They open up the right side of it for Fred, the pitch. Ball three, miss. And it's three and oh to Pacek as he leaves off the third. And he would be a good man to get aboard to start the inning with that good base running ability of his. Mitchell leading sign from Gene Dennis to the windup. Real pitch to Pacek. It's a strike and it's three and one. Mitchell, the right-hander, action resumes in the A's bullpen, the pitch. Strike two on the inside corner. Pacek thought it was ball four. Now a fourth count, three and two, and left-hander Paul Lindblad is up throwing in the A's bullpen. Three-two pitch to Pacek. Line down the left field line of fair ball. Rudy over to cut it off. Pacek around first. He's going to try for a second. Here comes the throw. Safe with a double is Pacek. So the Royals have Pacek and Struckle with nobody out in the third. Fred ripped a line drive down the left field line. 
his 19th double of the year. And here's Tom Boquette. Boquette, Otis, and Brent now with a shot at driving in a run. Boquette fly to left his first time up. Bando shallow at third still. Garner bluffs in behind Potek. Mitchell the stretch. Pitch to Boquette. Is a strike of the letter. Strike one. Potek double the fourth Royals into the ball game. Pokey deep in the batter's box waiting as Mitchell reads sign. Stretched by the right-hander. Potek a lead at second. Now the pitch. He's going to punt. Pass the mound. Barely feels the ball safe at first. And Potek at third. Poquet laying down a beautiful bunt. He got it past the pitcher, Paul Mitchell. Ron Fairley, the first baseman, had to field the ball, and nobody was there. Poquet beat it. So the Royals have their second bunt hit of the ball game, their fifth hit of the ball game, and runners at first and third, nobody out for Raymond Otis. Otis struck out his first time up. and the Royals could use a hit here. They're up one nothing. It's the third. Lindblad working hurriedly in the A's bullpen. Throw to first. Poquette back in time. Tom, a fair runner. You know, he's had a couple of knee operations. Potek at third, a great runner. Fairly holding Poquette at first. Bando fairly near the bag at third. And Mitchell getting set to work to aim as Otis. The stretch, the pitch. Ball, low and outside, ball one. George Brett in the on-deck circle setting Paul Mitchell and Bentley. Now Phil Garner in to say a few words to his pitcher. The wind blowing out toward left, not strongly. Really a rather gentle breeze blowing that way. Now Garner back to his position. And Paul Mitchell turns his attention to the plate, reading signs from Gene Dennis. Here's the stretch. Now the pitch. Ball low, and it's 2-0 on Amos Otis. He went 3-0 on Potchett, came back to 3-2, Fred Double. Poquette laid down a perfect run up the right side, beat it out. Now 2-0 to Amos Otis. And Mitchell needs to make a pitch right here. Otis digging in. Mitchell is ready. Here's the stretch by the right-hander. The pitch. Fly ball drifting down the right field line. Chasing it later. Can't get there. And here comes Potek to score. Poquet turning for third. And Otis in the second base with a double. It's two to nothing. Royals and runners at second and third. Nobody out. field line, and Don Bader gave it a wave of a shake. He almost got to the ball, but not quite. Potek able to play it save at third. Scored easily. Poquette had to hold. But when the ball dropped, he went turning into third base. And that's going to do it for Paul Mitchell. The A's are quickly going to make the pitching change. They know what the ball game means to them. So here's the situation. We're in the top of the third. The Royals have a run home. Runners at second and third. Nobody out. Brett coming to the plate. Left-hander Paul Hitchlatt comes on with a score. The Royals two and the A's nothing. Well, things are looking mighty fine for the Kansas City Royals right now because, remember, the mathematics of the situation. The magic number is three. And, of course, any combination of Oakland A losses and Kansas City wins, the money to three and it's all over with. But as I mentioned to you earlier, this is a two-for-one night, meaning, obviously, if Oakland loses this game to Kansas City, well, then the magic number is reduced to one. And then uh, Kansas City has to win just one of its remaining games, and Oakland would have to lose just one of its remaining, remaining uh, games, and then that's all over for the American League West. The Royals have lost the last two games of the A's. They've lost four straight. And uh, the A's, who have cut the Royals' lead to two and a half games, will have to return to Chicago Monday night for a makeup of a rainout with the White Sox if the American League West Championship has not been decided. Well, it's only a pinning ball game, but we mentioned before the game, the A's just have to win this one. 
The Royals don't have to. They want to. But at any rate, A's manager Chuck Tanner going to the bullpen in a hurry to bring out left-hander Paul Lindblad. He makes his 65th appearance of the year. He's won six games, lost five. His earned run average is 2.91. He has five saves. In 111 innings, he's given up 109 hits, only four home runs. He worked with George Brett with first base open. Then Hal McCray and then Mayberry. Otis Duffel down the right field line has one run home. Now a right-hander up throwing. The Oakland bullpen, like Jim Todd, it is Todd up throwing. Lindblad has completed his warm-up tosses, and George Brett steps in. First base is open, and he may not see a good pitch to hit. On the other hand, he may. Now Lindblad calls his third baseman, Sal Bandu, over. Royals have Boquette at third. Otis at second. George Brett grounded at second his first time up in this ballgame. Now the stretch by Lindblad, the first pitch. Ground ball at the second baseman. Their play is going to be the first to run scores, and there's one man out. Brett's out, second to first, but he gets a run home. Boquette scored easily. Brett down 4-3 with an RBI. It's 3 to nothing Royals. Otis remains at second with one man out now, and here comes Al McRae. Max Singleton scored his first time up. Conference at the mound, shortstop first Campanera is in. Now Gene Tennis, the catcher out. And again, first base open with Hal McCray at the plate. Right-handed batter. Left-handed hitting John Mayberry coming up next. Now one man out. And we'll see if they pitch to McCray. Three to nothing Royals were in the top of the third. Two runs home in the inning. Wayne Milt back at Callen's line drive. A bit gets by the first baseman. Well, the lead four to nothing, but let's don't look back. Let's get more here, okay? McCray steps in, and the A's are going to pitch to him. Lindblad to the stretch. Look at Otis at second. Long look back. He breaks contact, and Otis back to the bag. The A's play McCray to pull the ball. He's a good opposite field hitter in a big gap in right center of the pitch. Ball low, ball one. Lindblad will most likely try to keep the ball away from McCray, not give him anything to pull. And if so, Max might try to take advantage of the open space in right center field and go that way with him. We'll see. Here's the stretch. Lindblad ready, the 1-0 pitch. Foul back. He's trying to pull it in. It's one ball, one strike. So the Royals are broken on top in this ball game. The Royals now have six hits in this contest, three runs home. One one to count on Hal McRae. Otis, the lead at second. Lindblad, the pitch. Lined at the shortstop. First Gabineris, and there are two men out. McCray hit it like a bullet, but right at Bert Campanera, who picked it off his shoe top. That's the second time already in his game with men in scoring position that the Royals have hit a ball like a bullet right at someone. So it's up to Mayberry to get the other run home. John Single his first time up. The A's apply the shift. Campanera the shortstop, out behind second. Garner halfway to first. The outfield plays him deep in the pole. John again pinwheeling the bat waiting. Left-hander against left-hander. Two out with Otis at second. Now John thought Lindblad took a little too much time. He's out. Now back in, and again he's in wheels the bat. Lindblad the stretch and the pitch. Slow curve for a strike. And a strike one on Mayberry. Cowens with the net if Mayberry keeps the inning alive. Todd continues to throw in the Oakland bullpen. Lindblad reading signs from Gene Tennis. The stretch by the left-hander. The pitch. Ball inside, and it's got even one and one. And Mayberry, out of the batter's box. To give it a thought for a moment, now steps back in. Rudy way off the line and left. 
nearly halfway to center field. Here's the stretch by Winblad. 1-1 pitch to John Mayberry. Ground ball at the second baseman. Bill Garner has it. Throws the first in time, and the inning's over. But the Royals get two runs on three hits. No errors. One man left, and we go to the bottom of the third. It's now the Royals three, and the A's nothing. Well, there's at least one person, probably two, if you want to include Ken Norton, who is not happy with the fight at Yankee Stadium, and that's Mike Burke, who's the president of Madison Square Garden, which promoted Tuesday night's Dolly Norton championship fight. He expressed disgust over the ugly circumstances which caused the event to fall more than a million dollars below expectations in live gate revenue, and it led to a near riot condition inside and outside the stadium. Only uh, 30,000 fans showed up, after about 40 to 45,000 had been predicted. Burke said the current unofficial estimate of paid admissions is about two and a half million, with the final figures to be completed in two or three days. What had been promoted as an event that would shatter all existing Boxing Gate records thus fell short of the 2.6 million mark set in the second Gene Tunney Jack Dunphy fight at Chicago Soldier Field in 1927. Well, we move to the bottom of the third in Oakland. The Royals are up 3-0. It'll be Cordell Washington, Ron Fairley, and Enfield Gardner, the number seven, eight, and nine hitters for the Oakland A's in the inning. Larry Gura has worked through the right-handed hitters in the Oakland lineup, not allowing a base runner. Now he faces two left-handers, then another right-hander. Washington hitting 258. Five homers, 53 RBIs. He's been a hot hitter recently for the Oakland A's. Been a hot hitter in the first two games in this series. Royals playing the opposite way. Brett Shallow at third, guards against the bunch. The line by Gura and the pitch. Inside it hitting. And Washington aboard. But now Washington just missed by a pitch. Is aboard to start the A third. So here comes Ron Fairley. Tried to trot him with a fastball, got it in a little bit too tight. Washington made not much of an effort to get out of the way. He let the pitch nicky. So Fairley steps in hitting 270 with the A's. Three homers with the A's and eight RBI. One home run in this series. Left hander against left hander. Washington a good base runner. The pitch. This is ball one. Waddell Washington with 36 stolen bases. Mayberry holds him at first. The outfield straight away against Fairley. Stretch by Gura. Out of one open. All away, ball two. Fairley backs out of the batter's box. Looks at his third base coach, Joe Lynette, to see if he's hitting or taking. Pretty good crowd on hand here in Oakland tonight. The 2 0 pitch. Strike. Gura got the fastball over and it's two and one. The Royals have staked Murray to a three to nothing lead. Into the stretch he goes, the throw to first, not in time. Cordell Washington back. the count. Gura the stretch. Six Washington at first the pitch. Swing and a miss and the count even down at 2-2. Two -two. So get shallow and left. Otis fairly deep in center. Cowan fairly deep in right. Potek the shortstop over near the bag in second. Low off, well off the bag. The stretch. The 2-2 two -two pitch to fairly. Foul back and barely got a piece of it. The count remains 2-2. Two -two. Gura thinking over his next pitch. Barely out of the batter's box for a moment. Waddell, Washington, a straight lead at first at the moment. Now the stretch by Gura. 2-2 two -two pitch. There goes the runner. Line down the left field line, whisting foul into the A's bullpen. And Washington around second will have to go back to first. Fairly 
Bailey got a pitch outside and tried to take it the opposite way. Hit it hard, but foul. And we'll see what Kura comes back with. A fan out on the left field bleachers losing something out on the field. Amos Otis going over to retrieve it. Puts it back over the fence. So the game being delayed for a moment while we have a moment. Here's a Royals radio salute to these trip paint dealers in our area, Tabor Hardware in Tabor, Iowa, and Taylor Pharmacy in Clorinda, Iowa. Ron Fairley waiting now. We're set to go again. Larry Gura again to the stretch. Blow to first, not in time. Washington back. Washington. to first again. He didn't like the lead he had, and again, Washington back in time. Mayberry returns the ball to Gura. All the other divisional races are over. The Royals trying to all but close out this race here tonight. Have taken a 3 to nothing lead in this ball game. But a long way to go. We're only in the bottom of the third. A starter, Paul Mitchell, is gone. Stretched by Larry Gura. Check Washington. 2-2 pitch, there goes the runner, foul back. Still nobody out in the inning, a long battle going on right now between Gura and Fairley. The Royals have opened up the attack a bit here tonight. Boy, they've been bunning and slicing away, and it's paid some only dividends. Now Gura, the 2-2 pitch again. He started to go after a pitch outside and held off, and it's a full count, three and two, and now Larry needs to make a pitch. Curve ball out away from Fairley. He was able to check his swing in time. Right-handed hitting Phil Garner next. With a full count, Washington undoubtedly will be running. The stretch by Gura. Throw to first. Not in time. He's back. Gura hoping to catch Washington leaning the other way. Washington with great speed. If Philly should strike out, John Wathen, the royal catcher, has a bottom. A left-handed batter up there in that great speed of Washington and trying to shut him down in second. Stretch by Gura. 3-2 pitch. Fly ball center field. Otis and Poquette together. Poquette makes the call and the catch. And there's one away. Washington retreats to first. It was a long battle between Gura and Fairley. And Gura finally wins it. And here comes Phil Garner, a right-handed batter, hitting 258 with eight home runs and 72 runs batted in. Fairley made Gura work, but work he did. Larry slams the rosin bag to the ground. Back on top, looks down for a sign. Again, Washington establishes his lead. Gura the threat. First pitch to Garner. Foul tip, strike one. The Royals got one in the second. Sacked on two more in the third. Cookie Rojas bunt single, showing how McClay was the first one of the ball game. A perfect bunt with two out in the second. Otis double home run in the third. Brett got another one home with a ground ball. Now the pitch again to Garner outside, making pitch state out there, and a count even one and one. Boy, Gura has thrown a lot of good pitches already in this ball game. Just refused to yield to Ron Fairley and finally got him. Washington again, the lead at first, the pitch. Garner lines one in his shadow left field. Boquette charging. He trapped the ball. And runners safe at first and second. The first hit of the ball game for the Oakland A's. Well, Kidd gave it a go. He made a dive at it, but he trapped it. The A's first hit. They have runners at first and second now. One man out on the third. Action in the Royals both. And let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Kansas City Royals Baseball Network. This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service. And 
Mark Waddell is up throwing in the Royal bullpen. Billy, that tells you a little bit something about this game. The A's go into the bullpen so early. And Mark Waddell up about as early as he's been up all year in the ballgame. I was watching Galen Sisko go out to the mound and trying to read lips with binoculars from this distance. He doesn't always do very much, but I thought maybe I detected Galen Sisko asking Larry Gura why he wasn't throwing more fastballs. He hasn't been throwing the fastball much at all here in the inning. He relied on his fastball quite a bit in the first two innings. Let's see if he goes back to it. Let's just kind of keep track. Bill Morris is with dinner stepping in a right-handed battery. Fly to center his first time up. The Royals could use a double play, but North... A seventh inning one in the way to double up. North represents the tying run at the plate. He has the two home runs this year, but they have both come as a right-handed batter. The stretch by Larry Gura. Now the pitch. North, bunch, foul. Strike one. North has been a hot hitter recently. Normally, just a contact hitter, he'll bounce the ball and run. He can fly. He's a man you can strike out. And Gura needs it right here. The chances of striking him out much better than the chances of doubling him up. The A's, of course, thinking the other way, wanting the base hit. Three to nothing Royals. Bottom of the third, one out. Stretched by Gura the pitch. Pop fly. Right field. Al Callens has it measured. He's got it. Washington tags and holds at second base. And it's two out with runners at first and second. two out, and here's Bert Campaneras, who was out on a fly ball to right his first time up. If you're wondering, Gura threw a fastball, then an off-speed curve to North, and got him with the curveball. Here's Campaneras, right-handed batter. The outfield shallow. Larry Gura trying to close out the A's in the third and keep the Royals in front 3 nothing. The pitch to Campaneras. Ball outside, ball one. That was a fastball that time. Campaneras with three RBIs in the first game of this series got him without the benefit of a base hit. Larry Gura into the stretch. 1-0 pitch. Fly ball, center field. Amos Otis is there. That should do it. He makes the catch, and the inning's over, and he got him on a fastball. So Galen Sisko to the mound to talk to Gura. He came back throwing fastballs and gets out of the inning. No run, a hit. No error. to hit batter and two left. And we'll go to the fourth. The Royals three and the A's nothing. We're telling you about John Montefusco's no-hitter against the Atlanta Braves Wednesday night. If you thought that was something, we almost had another one. Brent Strom signing Cincinnati. He had a no-hitter through seven before George Foster opened the eighth with a double just inside the left field line on a 1-0 pitch. Tony Perez followed with a single to account for the Reds' run as uh, the Padres beat the Reds 6-1. to Strom missed a perfect seven innings when he walked pinch hitter Ed Armbrister on a 3-2 pitch with two out in the sixth and then picked him off at first base. Fred Norman was the loser. His record is 12-7. Raiders uh, crowd, Doug Raider in the fourth, the fourth grand slam of his career, and his ninth home run of the season came with two out, and Billy Allman and Johnny Grubb aboard via singles, and Merv Redmond on base with a walk. Champions homer came in the fourth after Fred Kendall reached first when shortstop Dave Concepcion fumbled his grounder for an error. The top of the fourth here in Oakland it'll be Al Cowan, Cookie Rojas, and then John Watson for the Royals. Left-hander Paul Lindblad back to the mound for the Oakland A's. Lindblad came on in the third. Got Brett, McCray, and Mayberry. Working in relief of right-hander Paul Mitchell, who made the start. All three of the Royals' runs have been charged to Mitchell, all six of their hits. And here's Al Cowens, who has only described it for you, just hit a bullet with runners at first and third. In the second inning of this ball game, and nobody out, but he hit it right at the first baseman, Ron Fairley, and lined into a double play. So, Gowan up takes the ball, ball one. Al hitting 264, and he has hit the ball hard for five games now. 
Lindblad ready. Here comes the pitch. Foul pit by Callens, and the count's even one and one. The Royals were down one, two, three in the first, but they picked up three hits and a run in the second, three hits and two runs in the third. Callens now takes the breaking pitch for a strike, and Allen the hole one and two. Looks a plate umpire Al Clark rather questioning that as a breaking pitch. Royals will head back to Kansas City after this game tonight and play the Minnesota Twins on Friday night at 7.30. The pitch. He's a long belt that's way fouled on the left end of the line. Challenge really got around on a pitch and hit it into the mezzanine section. Now, belt buckle may be up there with that if it's so far inside. Here's the one-two pitch to him. Low clear, grounded at Bando. He bobbles momentarily, but throws high, but in time. And there's one away. Callen's out third to first. He hit the ball sharply again, but he's out. And it's one out, nobody on to Cookie Rojas. Cookie laid down a perfect body. First time up. And that bunt single with two men out. But Sal Bando deep at third and has scored Al McRae with the first run of the ball game. Cookie's had four hits in this series now, at least one in every game. Two in the first, one last night, and one here tonight already. Right hand batter in against Paul Lindblad in the first pitch. The ball into the dirt, ball one. Pitch to Rojas. Cookie started a swing and did. Way down fire. Al Clark says he went around. That is one ball, one strike, and Cookie not too happy. The outfield straight away against Cookie. Paul Inblad, the left-hander, looks at tennis for a sign. Here's the pitch. Tap foul. And Cookie in the hole, one ball, two strikes. He picks the ball up himself. Puts it back to Lindblad. Don't forget now, Saturday's game, the Royals and the Twins has been moved from a night game to the afternoon game to accommodate national television. So it shows at 7.30 at the 1.30 ball game Saturday at home. There's a line drive right at Garner at second base. And again, the Royals get a line drive right at an A. And Rojas is out, two out, nobody on. To John Watson. Watson hit a ground ball smash right at the first baseman his first time up. So Lindblad has retired five in a row now since coming on. And here's Watson. John has been used sparingly, but he's had some big hits for the Royals this year. First pitch to him. Swung and missed around late on a fastball. Strike one. Duke getting some dirt on his hands out of the batter's box for a moment. Now back in. Well back off the plate is Watson. The pitch. Fly ball in the shallow left. Rudy charging. He's there. He's got it in the innings over. Watson flies the left. And Lindblad has come out of the bullpen to retire six in a row. No runs, no hits. No errors, none left. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth. Royal three. A is nothing. Jerry Martin doubled home pitch runner Rick Bossetti in the eighth inning, and that broke a tie and gave the playoff-bound Philadelphia Phils a 6-5 to five win over the St. Louis Cardinals. Bossetti was running for Bob Boone, who drew a walk from losing reliever John Curtis. The winner was Todd McGraw, who's now 7-6, and six, who pitched two innings and gave up the tying run to Jerry Mumphrey on a bases-loaded single in the sixth. Mumphrey tied the game at five by driving in Hector Cruz, who had singled, and Mike Tyson, who had walked. The Cardinals scored two runs in the fifth on four straight singles by pinch hitter John Tremango, Mumphrey, Gary Templeton, and Keith Hernandez, and a run in the first on a triple by Templeton and a ground out. Tom Lasorda, a dedicated organization man, has been named the new manager of the Los Angeles Dodgers to replace Walter Alston. Alston, who finally announced his retirement Monday after 23 years on the job, immediately put Lasorda in charge of the club. Bottom of the fourth in Oakland, three to nothing Royals. The A's have the heart of the order coming up. Rudy Tennyson Bando. Larry Gura. It's given the A's but one hit. He's hit a batter. Both of those occurrences in the third inning. But he works around it by getting North and Campanera. So here comes Rudy, who popped his second hit first time up. Rudy, hitless in this series, has now gone. Four games without a hit. 
They hadn't done that since way back in July. So Rudy, struggling a bit, but dangerous. He had a long belt last night that was hauled in and left field. The pitch to him from Gura. Strike needle the outside corner of fastball. Strike one. Brent a couple of steps back at third, well off the line. The outfield deep, they play him seated to pull. Rudy, out of the batter's box for a moment, steps back in, and Gura set to work to him. Line to the left-hander, the pitch. Foul back. Scoreboard now has it one and one. I'm sure I saw Al Clark pump his right arm on the first pitch. Now they have it 0 2. So Gura has Rudy in the hole. I don't see what Larry can do with him. Here comes the line. Two strike pitch to Rudy. Well, curve, battle at five deck, he's got it. Doubles it up and throws, and there's one away. Rudy grounds it short, one out, nobody on the team tennis. Here's team tennis, who grounded the third his first time up. Batting in the number four spot for the Oakland A's tonight, his average 250. Tennis with 22 home runs and 65 runs batted in. An extreme pull hitter in the Royals play him that way. Gura's first pitch to him. Fastball for a strike over the outside corner. Strike one. Brett just a couple of steps off the line at third. Roquette near the line in left. And Otis way over in left. Callen's way over off the line in right. The pitch. It's the way and it's one ball, one strike. We'll change up that time from Larry Gura. So Dennis has seen the fastball in the game. A great fastball hitter. Let's see what Gura gives him this time. 1-1. One, one. That ball inside on 2-1. and one. He's hitting the fastball, but he got it well in on him. Two balls and a strike. One out, nobody on the bottom of the fourth in Oakland. Larry Curra ready. Comes the pitch. He's down low and it's 3-1. and one. to come back. And he may try to do it with a breaking pitch and off-speed pitch again. We'll see. Here comes the 3-1 to tennis. That's ball walking. Outside ball four. <laughs> Trying to keep the fastball away from tennis and he missed with it. So with one out, tennis walks. The first pass given by Larry Gura. And here's Sal Bando. Boy, he has been a wrecking crew against the Royals this year. Bando fouled out to the third baseman his first time up. The pitch. That ball tap foul at the third base side. One strike to Bando. Foul hitting 439 against the Royals. Eight homers. Boy. Dennis at first with one out. We're in the fourth. Royal playing deep. Struck by Gura. Out of pitch. That's breaking pitch inside. And it's even a one and one. John Baylor next. Dennis not much of a threat to run. Has a safe lead at first. He's stolen five bases this year. The pitch. That ball battle at Brett. That might be two. There's second base one. Rojas the first. Double play, and the inning's over. So Gura again closes out the A's. The play went 5-4-3. Brett to Rojas to Mayberry. The double play ends the fourth. No runs, no hits. No errors. Nobody left. We'll go to the fifth. The Royal three. A's nothing. Tom Lasorda, who is 49 and is the third base coach of the Los Angeles Dodgers, has been in the uh, Dodgers organization since the 1950s when he was a coach under Walter Austin at Montreal. And Austin, who won seven National League pennants and four World Series, responded by congratulating Lasorda and wishing him well. Personalities of Austin and Lasorda are strikingly different, but they are both tough competitors. Austin became known as the quiet man for his unobtrusive demeanor, 
whereas Lasorti is sometimes loud and obviously aggressive. Dodger President Pedro O'Malley announced the selection of Lasorda, the odds-on favorite, but he would not disclose whether any other candidates were considered. Lasorda was asked how much the Dodgers agreed to pay him, no doubt uh, considerably less than the 105000 that Austin is reported to be getting, and he indicated money meant nothing to him on this job, his dream of a lifetime. Well, we go to the fifth in Oakland, the Royal Blade, three to nothing. Fred Bostick will start us in, both get and Otis. To the fifth, and once again, here's Denny. All right, Fred. Bostick doubled and scored his first time up. Royals have a half a dozen hits. Paul Lindblad, those retired six in a row. So Bostick up there with 103 hits. Friday night, the Royals will be home at Royal Stadium to play the Minnesota Twins. Same two teams on Saturday and Sunday afternoon. Fred Potek digging in. A left-hander Paul Lindblad getting ready. The A's are playing Potek straight away, not too deep in the outfield. Lindblad delivers. Potek tries to bunt, pops it up, and tennis makes the foul ball catch about halfway between home and third. Potek trying to bunt his way on, fouls out. But tennis makes the play. That'll bring up Tom Potek. Tom laid down a very pretty drag bunt. And then came around to score a run in the third. He flies to left field, hitting the first pitch of the game back in the first. Base is empty, one away. Royals got one in the second, two in the third. Lynn Glad works. Curveball of beauty, strike one. Nothing in one. The matchup, left-hander against left-hander. Lindblad to Poquette, fast ball, missed away. One ball and one strike. Royals have won eight games against the A's this year. The A's have nine wins against the Royals. Breaking ball has popped up down the left field line. Everybody chasing a champ and Harris into foul territory to make the catch. Jeff fouls out to Campanaris. So quickly, two gone, and Amos Otis coming up. Amos, a strikeout victim in the first. Double down the right field line to drive in a run in the third inning. It was Otis' double that knocked out the starter, Paul Mitchell. Lindblad came into the game, got Brett on a ground ball, but that ground ball scored a run. And since then, the Royals have not had a base runner. So Lindblad has stopped them cold. Rolling inside to Amos Otis. One ball, no strike. For the Royals, this is game number 159. One and zero on Otis. Lindblad set the line to the pitch. There's a drive to deep left field. Back goes Rudy. A way back to the wall. It's gone. A home run for Otis. And look at Amos Otis. Applauding himself as he rounds first, Chuck Tiller, the third base coach, jumping up and down on the third base bag, now congratulates Otis as he completes this tour of the bases. So Amos Otis has struck a home run, and for the Royals, that is their first home run since September the 16th. The Royals have gone 11 games and 107 innings without a home run. It is four to nothing Royals. Otis gets to Lindblad with two out in the fifth. Here's George Brett. He takes a breaking ball, though. One ball, no strike. So Otis has driven in two of the four runs. The 1 0 pitch. Foul tip by Brett. One ball, one strike. The A's pitching staff had gone 67 in one third innings without giving up a home run. Lindblad's pitch to Brad is lifted into center field. Coming in is Norris. Still coming in as Bill makes the catch to retire the side. But the Royals get a run on Otis' two-out homer. One run, one hit. Nobody left. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Royals four, A's nothing. The Philadelphia Flyers left wing Dave Schultz, known more for his brawling than his scoring, has been traded to the Los Angeles Kings for what is believed to be a top draft choice. Philadelphia general manager Keith Allen saying that Schultz was traded for future considerations, but not players. He refused to comment on whether they were draft picks or cash. 
However, Schultz reached at his Cherry Hill, New Jersey home that Allen told him he was being traded for a draft choice. The first question was, who was the trade for? And they said a draft choice. Schultz said, when they traded Bill Clement, they got uh, Mel Bridgman, who was the number one draft choice, a super hockey player. Allen said Schultz was traded because Bridgman would be playing center regularly, and in doing that, we're probably going to have to move Rick McLeish to left wing, which would have probably moved Dave to fourth line duty. The 6'1", 190-pound Schultz, who was brought up from Richmond in the American Hockey League to join the Flyers in the beginning of 72-73 season, said he had nothing to be bitter about. He said, I gave them what I have had, and uh, they gave me what I they had. And he said, I had four great years here. What more can I ask? Schultz played on the team who won two Stanley Cups in 73-74 and 74 and 75 before losing last year's Cup Finals to the Montreal Canadiens. Schultz by the way, holds the National Hockey League record for the most penalty minutes in the season, over 400. They go to the bottom of the fifth. The Royals leading four to nothing now. Don Baylor leading off. Baylor fouled out to Brett his first time up. Larry Gurr's pitch. Breaking ball is line to Rojas. One away. Baylor hit on the hands of that pitch. Hit a whooping liner to Cookie Rojas. So one pitch, one out. And here comes Cordell Washington, who was hit by a pitch ball his first try. Alexander Gora facing Cardell Washington. Larry Pitt. Fast ball for a strike on one. The A's have just one hit, the single by Phil Garner in the third inning. Fast ball Washington swinging very late. And no chance to hit that pitch. Washington didn't swing until the ball had nestled in John Wappen's glove. Oh, and two. Back comes Gura. Curveball down to DeRojas. Tough hop, but he's got it. On to Mayberry. Two down. Here's Ron Fairley. Round five to left in the third inning. He had quite a battle with Larry Gura. Larry finally put him away on the fly ball to Tom Pochette. Royals, four runs, seven hits. The A's, no runs, one hit. Bottom of the fifth inning. Third and final game of the series. Jonas pitched to Fairley. Fastball popped up. Down the right field line. Mayberry and Rojas in pursuit. Rojas making a foul ball catch to retire the side. Fairley fouls out. And the A's go down one, two, three. And the score after five. Royals, four, A's, nothing. Taking a look at the uh, details of other games in Major League Baseball, Rod Carew and Mike Covey knocked in two runs apiece, while relief ace Phil Campbell established an American League one-season record for innings pitched as the Minnesota Twins took a 9-1 to victory over Texas. Winning pitcher Pete Redfern worked the first seven innings and combined on a five-hitter with Campbell, who set the record of 165 and two-third innings by a relief pitcher. Campbell thus eclipsed the previous mark of 165 set by Eddie Fisher of the Chicago White Sox in 1965. Carew cracked his ninth home run for two runs in the fifth, which made the score 8-1, to one, while Cubbage doubled home two other runs during a four-run fourth for the Twins. Rookie starter and loser Tommy Boggs was the victim of the first seven Twins runs. Ex-Met Wayne Garrett blasted a grand slam home run, and Ellis Valentine hit a two-run homer to pace Montreal to a 7-2 to victory over New York in the Shea Stadium season finale for the Mets. Garrett whacked his sixth home run of the year off starter and loser Tom Seaver with two out in the fourth after two walks and a single loaded the bases. The Expos added another tally in the fifth on a single by Pepe Freyas, a sacrifice, and a double by rookie Andy Dawson. Valentine cracked his seventh home of the season in the eighth with Dell Unser on base. in the six. Royals four A's nothing. Here's Hal McCray. Hal has singled and lined hard to the shortstop. McCray has scored one of the four Royal runs. Paul Lindblad in relief of Paul Mitchell. His delivery is outside ball one. The Royals had gone 11 games and 107 innings without a home run. 
Bends up in McCray. Pops it up in the right field. John Baylor beneath the ball and makes the catch one away. Pause here for station identification. This is the Royals Radio Network. This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service. Kenny Matthews and Fred White at the Oakland Coliseum where the Royals are leading four to nothing. Mayberry hits a change back and out of play. Foul back of the plate, 0 and 1. Mayberry has singled and grounded to the second baseman. The home run for Amos Otis was only the Royals' third home run this month. It was the second for Amos. Curve, John chasing a bad ball, misses to the count of 1 2. Otis had homered in Minnesota on September the 11th. And then Buck Martinez homered off to Nana in Anaheim on the 16th of September. That won a game for Marty Patton. And now Otis here tonight. Curveball is low to Mayberry. One and two. The Royals had hit two home runs in 29 games. And two homers in their last 271 innings. Breaking ball low and outside. Two balls and two strikes to John Mayberry. So the Royals have brought the home run out of extinction or near extinction tonight. The 2-2 pitch. Change inside to John. Ball three. Full count three and two. Nobody on. One out. Four nothing Royals. Top of the six. If the Royals win, the magic number will be one. The Royals will have clinched at least a tie for the Western Division title. If they win. Ball four to Mayberry. Lindblad was out in front 0-2, but... Trying to pitch too carefully to Johnny lost him. The one on one out, and up comes Al Cowan. Al lined into a double play in the second, grounded out to Bando in the fourth. Cowan's has hit the ball hard twice. Walk number one surrendered by Paul Lindblad. Right hander Stan Bonson begins to throw in the Oakland bullpen. Mayberry at first, one away. Lindblad pitches to Collins. Fast ball for a strike, on one. Royals scored one run in the second. The RBI to Cookie Rojas with a two-out punt. It got Al McCray home from third. The 0-1 pitch to Collins. Off-speed curve, didn't mean to do it. A ground ball foul down to third base coach Chuck Hiller. And the count on Al, 0-2. And the Royals got two runs in the third inning. Pacek and Poquette scoring the runs. The RBIs to Otis and Brett. And then Amos got to Lindblad for his two-out home run in the fifth. Otis has driven in two runs. He has scored one. Amos, you know, has had a running verbal battle with A's manager Chuck Tanner since midseason. And it was Otis who was beamed by Stan Bonson of the A's last week at Royal Stadium. And you can bet that Otis remembers that oh so well. No balls, two strikes on Collins. Mayberry at first, Swinblad works. Loop into right center field. It's going to be in for a base hit. Mayberry around second. It's going to try for third. Baylor versus the ball. Collins for second. He is base. Base at second base. Good base running by Al Collins. Baylor will draw an air. Mayberry, knowing Baylor's deficiencies in the outfield, never hesitated. He just rounded second and kept pumping for third base, and it paid off. And then Collins, very alertly, going into second base, Baylor was charging the ball. And once he recovered, he wasn't really that far from second base. And Collins just able to beat his hurry throw. So with one out, there are runners at second and third. And Cookie Rojas at the plate. Campanaris to the mound to talk to Lindblad. The A's, had, the A's had gone through eight consecutive airless games. So that streak has ended. The A's had gone through better than 78 innings without an error. Chuck Tanner, the Oakland manager, going to the mound. Rojas coming up. Stan Bonson throwing in the bullpen. Runners at second and third, one out. So we'll see what the A's do. 
It's a single for Cowan. And in the air to Don Baylor. That's going to do it for Paul Lindblad. The A's are going to make the pitching change. So here in the sixth inning at the Oakland Coliseum, the Royals have runners at second and third with one out. And the score is the Royals four and the A's nothing. John Montesco backing up his boast with a blazing fastball and pinpoint control has pitched the fourth no-hitter of the Major League season and the first of his career in a 9-0 win by San Francisco over Atlanta. Montefusco, who's 16 and 14, struck out four batters and walked only one. That was Jerry Royster who led off the fourth. The last time Montefusco had faced the Braves, that was on August 6th. He predicted that Willie Rontanez would not get a base hit off him the rest of the year. And he made good on that by not only blanking Montanez, but the entire Braves roster on that uh, game Wednesday. Only a 1,369 fans were in attendance, many of them shouting no hitter, no hitter at Montefusco as he crouched in the batter circle waiting to bat in the eighth inning. Montefusco was the National League Rookie of the Year in 1975 when he won 15 and lost 9. He has predicted that sometime he will win the Cy Young Award. Denny Matthews and Fred White back at the Oakland Coliseum with the Royals are leading 4 to nothing. have runners at 2nd and 3rd, 1 out. And Stan Bonson now pitching for the A's. Bonson appearing for the 35th time. Stan with 8 wins, 7 losses, no saves. The ERA is 3.42. The batter will be Cookie Rojas. Royals will be home on Friday night. That, by the way, is fan appreciation night, and each fan attending the Friday game with the Twins will receive a plastic mug with colored photos of all the Royals. Now, if the Royals could win this ball game, they would clinch a tie for the Western Division title. They could do no worse than tie. And if the Royals win tonight, that means that one victory at home on either Friday night, Saturday, or Sunday afternoon would clinch the title, and the Royals would be champions of the Western Division. So if the Royals win tonight, you better be there Friday night, because if the Royals win it, Friday night, they win it. They win it, they win it. But, and I spell that, capital B, capital U, capital T, they have to win tonight. And it's only the sixth. The infield is in. Runners at second and third. Bonson to Rojas. Started the swing, held up. Breaking ball, low and outside. Cookie, a surprise bump single. The drive in Hal McRae in the second. The first run of the game. He lined hard to the second baseman his second time up in the fourth. The A's at their infield halfway. Mayberry at third. Collins at second. The pitch to Cookie. Breaking ball is high. Ball two. Two and oh. Bonson working very carefully to Rojas. With first base open, John Watson coming up next. The A's able to play their infield halfway because Mayberry is the runner at third. John not fast. A fast man, they'd have to bring the infield all the way in. Chop foul near the batter's box by Cookie in the count two and one. Royals with eight hits, four runs. The A's, one hit, no run. Two balls and a strike on Cookie Rojas. Runners lead away. Stretch by Bonson. Here's the pitch. Fastball swung late and fouled away. Two balls, two strikes. Boy, it's tough to get a fastball by Cookie Rojas. He has that short stroke. Very quick bat. Two balls, two strikes. The stretch. Bonson pitch. Breaking ball, low, ball three, three and two. So a big pitch coming. Rojas with 15 runs batted in. A chance to add to that total right here. Bonson's three, two pitch. Breaking ball is popped up. Very shallow left field. Campanaris is there to make the catch in foul territory. And the runners have to hold. Campanera. And here's John Waffen. Waffen is grounded to first, wide to left. Bonson was able to get a breaking ball over and Cookie fouled out. 
Now Penn is out to talk to Bonson about John Wappen. Mayberry at third, Al Collins at second. Now there are two out. With one away, Mayberry walked and Collins singled. The runners moving up on the air by the right fielder, Don Baylor. Then Chuck Tanner brought in Bonson to pitch to Rojas. So Stan is halfway home. He got cookie, now he works on John Wappen. John, right hand batter. Four to nothing Royal, top of the six. A base hit between two runs. Wappen, around the just a bunt, takes the ball, one and oh. So that had the A's infield moving around. Duke. Fans a long way from the plate. Right hand batter. Bonson leaning in, reading sign. The right hander winds and deals. Foul ball back and out of play. That was a slider from Bonson, and Waffen was taking a shot towards right field. One ball, one strike, and the Royals catcher. Waffen hitting in the eighth spot. given by Gene Tennant. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Breaking ball. Fouled over the Royal dugout behind first. Out of play in the count one and two. Mayberry at third. Collins at second. Two out. Top of the six. Four nothing Royal. Lawson at the plate to count one and two. Bonson ready. The pitch on the way. Line foul down the right field line. Rattling around down near the Royals' bullpen. Bonson fastball. Wappen was swinging late. The John still alive. One ball, two strikes. And Bando to the mound to talk to Bonson. would be next if John can keep things going. One ball, two strikes. Bonson formerly with the Yankees and the White Sox. The rookie pitcher of the year for the Yankees in 1968. He wants to talk to his catcher, Gene Tennis, for a moment. One and two, the count on Wappen. Pick. A little tap along third foul down to Chuck Killer. Chuck inspecting the baseball once it's thrown out of play. Or at least Juan Foul Clark, the plate umpire, to take a look and he tosses it aside. One ball and two strikes on John Wappen. Royals have the day off tomorrow. The Minnesota Twins at Royal Stadium on Friday night, Saturday and Sunday afternoon. One ball, two strikes, two on, two out the pitch. Breaking ball, fly ball, fairly well hit right field. Back goes John Baylor. He's there to make the catch, and that retires the side. So Bonson comes in, and the runners at second and third get Rojas and Wappen, and the Royals do not score. No runs, one hit, one air, a walk, and two left. And as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning, the score is now the Royals four and the A's nothing. American League President Lee McPhail says if the race between Oakland and Kansas City in the Western Division ends in a tie, there will be a playoff game next Wednesday. A flip of the coin determined the game would be played in Kansas City. Should no more than one half game separate the A's and the Royals when the regular season ends, Kansas City would have to play a makeup game at Chicago Monday night. The final regular season meeting between the Royals and the White Sox was rained out to be replayed only if the result has a bearing on the final standings. Kansas City now leads Oakland by two and a half games. Rookie outfielder Dan Thomas drove in a pair of runs with a triple and a single as the Milwaukee Brewers beat the Baltimore Orioles 6-3. to three. The Brewers jumped on rookie lefty Scott McGregor for three runs in the second inning on run scoring singles by Steve Bowling, Jack Heideman, and Robin Yount. A pair of Tommy Harper doubles in the third and fifth innings brought in single oil runs, but Thomas singled across Hank Aaron with Milwaukee's fourth run in the sixth inning. Zora has throttled the A's out. 
offense on one hit so far. And that one hit by this man leading off, Bill Garner. Bill single back in the third inning. Garner has walked one. He has yet to strike anybody out. The A's have stranded two men both in the third inning. That was the inning of Garner's hit. And a hit batsman, Cordell Washington. The pitch to the right-hand hitting second baseman is wide, and John Mayberry diving to his right takes the stab. One away. Garner lines out to Mayberry. Fine play by John. One pitch, one out. Here's Bill North, who is fly to center and fly to right. The Royals have played well defensively. They turned over a double play to end the fourth inning. Empty went away. Now the top of the batting order. Larry Gurr's pitch to Bill North. Fastball waved at and missed. Going one. North has a right hand batter hitting 331. He is a 263 hitter from the left side. He bounced foul. And the count 0 2. Bill tried to drop one down. But he's in the hole, nothing in two. Royals got a run in the second. Two in the third, and one in the fifth. Four runs, eight hits, no errors. The A's, no runs, one hit, and one error. The error was not costly. The 0-2 pitch to Bill North. Down and in, one and two. Larry Gura, very quiet, soft-spoken. But an intense competitor. It has been a very tough year for Gura. The one-two pitch. Change of curve is hit into right center field. Otis and Collins come together and it is Al Collins to make the catch. Fine play by Al Collins in deep right center. Norris driving the ball a long way. And Collins and Otis pinching together in front of the 375 foot marker. And Collins ran it down. So there are two out and here is Campanera. Today they both got great jumps on the ball that time and Al able to outrun the ball and get there and Otis was behind him for insurance. There were two outfielders who he's in position to make a good play. So it's two out, the batter Campanera. And Campy is fly to center, fly to right. Right hand hitting shortstop. Fast ball high and outside, ball one. Dura started the season with the Yankees. He was not used at all by Billy Martin. He and George Brett's brother, Kenny, sat on the bench. Ground ball headed to right field. Throw hot. Dies, but can't get it. Campanera says the ground ball single. And here comes Joe Rudy. Rudy has popped the second and grounded it short. Dora and Brett, after sitting on the bench in New York, both were traded. Brett to the Chicago White Sox. And Gura, of course, coming to the Royals in the Fran Healy deal. He did not pitch here. He sat on the bench here, but he understood why. He didn't say anything. He was impatient. But he bided his time. Suffered a groin injury. Was ineffective. The boy for the last two months, Larry Gura has been one of Whitey Herzog's most dependable pitchers. And all of a sudden, here he is in this ball game. And what a job he's done to this point. Rudy fouls it away. 0-1. They begin to stir in the Royals' bullpen. Mark Littell will throw again. He was throwing a couple of innings ago. Gura, of course, can't be expected to go the distance. This is only his second start. And his other start back on August the 7th. He went six innings. The pitch to Joe Rudy. Foul ball back and out of play. And Gura has to count his way. No balls, two strikes. Latell throws alone in the Royals' bullpen. One on, two out. A's batting in the bottom of the sixth. Royals four, A's nothing. Otis has two RBIs. Amos a home run. Campanaris. Pretty good lead at first. Larry Gura has a good move. He throws the first, the runner back. I'll tell you something else about Larry Gura that might surprise you. Larry Gura 
is the best fielding pitcher on the Royals team. And you say, now, wait a minute. What about Al Fitzmaurice? Zora is a little better than Al Fitzmaurice. Quite it. This is an outstanding defensive pitcher. Up high is Zora's fastball. One and two to Joe Rudy. We are in the sixth. Royals four, A's nothing. Final game of the year between these two teams. Regular schedule. One and two to Joe Rudy. Zora's pitch. Off the curve. Had him reaching and he pops it up. Who wants it? Rojas out. Cowan's in. Cowan just got it. And Cookie Rojas down on one knee, stopping short of Cowan. And you can see Cookie yelling, Cowan, Cowan, Cowan. Communication so important, and especially in a ballpark, in which you're the visitor. So the Royals and Gora get it done in the bottom of the six. No runs, one hit, the two out single by Campaneras, and a man left. Six innings are in the book at the Oakland Coliseum, and the score, Royals four, Oakland nothing. That ticking heard on Capitol Hill is a legislative time bomb that could go off under professional baseball in the next session of Congress. Unless diffused by the baseball owners, it could blow to smithereens the sport's unique legal exemption from federal antitrust laws, which has prevailed on the basis of Supreme Court decisions for 54 years. The message that the immunity is in jeopardy was delivered at the recently concluded hearings of a special house committee on professional sports, which is to make recommendations to the Congress convening in January. More than half of the 13 committee members have pointedly signaled they are leaning toward ending baseball's exemption, including the chairman and the senior GOP member. The fail-safe point may be reached in early December when the major league owners convene for their winter meetings in Los Angeles. Failure of the National League to expand at that time might well trigger an adverse committee response. Six inning total, Royals four runs, eight hits. No errors and four left. The A's no runs, two hits, both singles. One air and three left. And for the Royals here in the seventh, Fred Potek, Tom Poquette, and Amos Otis. So here we go. Stan Bonson ready to face Potek, and for more play, here's Fred. Okay, thank you, Danny. Potek doubled and scored in the third. Fouled out to the catcher trying to bunt in the fifth. Now leads off the seventh. Bonson sets the pitch from the right-hander. Swung and missed. Potek strike one. Down in Anaheim, Nolan Lyon has thrown a three-hitter tonight. A three-to-nothing victory. He struck out 11. Lyon now with 314 strikeouts this season. Pitch to Potek. Strike two called on the outside corner. Ryan, the winner in that game, 16 and 8, 10, 18. Ken Brett, the loser for Chicago, 10 and 12, a three hitter by Nolan Ryan. Two strikes to Potek, and Bonson delivers. Brett, it's a high pop up. Sal Bando, straddling the foul line just behind the bag, makes the catch. And it's one out, nobody on to Tom Poquette. Pokey won for three, single and scored in the third. Four to nothing, Royals. We're in the top of the seventh. Just in case you're wondering, the Royals plane due to arrive at KCI at 4.30 at... Which that time will check at Poquette. Takes the ball outside, ball one. That would get him to Royal Stadium about... 5.15 to 5.30 a.m. The pitch to Boquette. Line foul down the left field side. One ball, one strike. Boquette hit it off the end of the bat. Royals have hit the A's 8-2. to two. The Royals got a run in the second, two in the third, one in the fifth. They lead four to nothing. One out now in the seventh. The pitch to Boquette. Foul out of play off the left side. It's one and two. Right, the Royals are scheduled to arrive the United Charter at KCI at 4.30 in the morning. Again, to the ballpark about 5.15 to 5.30. For the two runs left in the sixth one big, you have to remember the A's power. Pitch to Boquette. Roof down the left field line. Foul again. Bonson making good pitches, but Boquette spoiling them. Next, if anybody gets aboard, George Brett. Tom Boquette hitting 302. 
What a rookie season he's had. Bonson, the right-hander, ready. Here comes the one-two pitch. Line foul down the left field side again out of play. The Bocic is filling up the left side of the Coliseum here with foul balls. Larry Gura has been tremendous. He has this game within range of the Royals' bullpen now. Just winding the pitch to Boquette. Ball high. Now two and two to Boquette. But the A's, who are not giving up with the battle, have three shots left with all that power to come up one more time. Monson set, two two to Boquette. Tom hits it off his fist. Low roller past the mound. Belly up, throws the first in time. There are two men out. Good play by Ron Belly. So it's two out, nobody on in the seventh game. As notice, who has a double, a home run, and has driven in two. Amos facing Bonson for the first time here tonight. Stan Bonson that hit Amos Otis in the head in the first game of the series last week in Kansas City. So here we are. The two men face one another again on the floor of the Oakland Coliseum, the pit. Otis, it's a line drive down the left field line. Rudy on the run makes the catch to the foul line. Otis hit it hard, but he's out. He lines the left. The inning over, no runs, no hits. No errors, none left. Bonson has retired five in a row. We go to the bottom of the seventh, the Royal Four, the A's nothing. Jerry West makes his NBA professional coaching debut Thursday night when his Los Angeles Lakers, featuring Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and some new talent, take on the Portland Trailblazers and Bill Walton, also aided by a relatively new supporting cast. Jack Ramsey, who found success at Buffalo but left after three straight playoff years because of a falling out with management, will be coaching Portland, which fired Lenny Wilkins after two seasons. The confrontations between Jabbar and Walton, both former UCLA all-time greats, have become intense. In Walton's injured plague rookie season, Jabbar showed the big redhead a thing or two. Last year, also another injury-prone season for Walton, the Portland center began to hold his own against Jabbar and outplayed him on occasion. The Laker-Blazer contest is part of an exhibition twin build, which matches Seattle against Golden State in the opener. A capacity house of almost 12,000 is expected. Portland, a last place finisher in five of its six seasons in the NBA, is trying its fourth coach, who is bringing a running style of play and new faces to the Blazer scheme. Gone are former all-star performer Sidney Wicks, the former All-America forward from UCLA, and guard Jeff Petrie, last of the original Blazers. Wicks was sold to New Orleans, and Petrie was traded to Atlanta for a high pick in the American Basketball Association dispersal draft in which Portland got Maurice Lucas and Moses Malone. We go to the seventh. It's Tennis, Bando, and Baylor for the Oakland A's. Larry Gura winds the first pitch of Gene Tennis into the dirt, ball one. Gura, who has stifled the A's on two hits through six innings, now has to face the right-handed Thunder. In the Oakland A's lineup in the seventh with the Royals in front, 4 nothing. The pitch, Tennis, foul tip, and the count even a ball and a strike. Tennis, Bando, and Baylor with 67 home runs among them. Tennis, 22. Bando, 27. Baylor with 15. Tennis hitting 249. The pitch. All the way in it's 2-1. and one. Tennis has grounded the third and walked. Right-handed batter. Steve Mangori begins to work in the Royal bullpen. The pitch. Ground ball to the mound. Gura has got it. Flips to Mayberry, there's one away. So Tennis has gone pitcher to first. One out, nobody on in the seventh to Sal Bando. Bando has fouled the third and grounded into a double play. Third to second to first, he's over to tonight. This man who has broken the Royal Heart so many times this year. The pitch. Off-speed pitch, outside corner, strike one. Larry Gura set. Again, the pitch to Bando. 
Ball a little low. The count's even one and one. Brett near the line at third back a couple of steps. The outfield deep playing Vando to pull. Right-hander Mike Norris is working in the Oakland bullpen. Left-hander Steve Mangori in the Royal bullpen. The pitch. Vando takes the ball and it's two and one. Gura kept it out away from him that time. Two balls, one strike. Gura set the line by the left-hander. The pitch. Vando fouls it back and the count's even two and two. Vando dug in deep in the batter's box, about a foot off the back line. Larry Gura tugs at his cap. Has the side. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Struck him out. Vando down swinging after an off-speed pitch on the outside corner. There are two out with nobody on in the seventh. The first strikeout for Larry Gura in this ballgame. And Don Baylor set to step in. Baylor has fouled to third. He has lined to second. Boy, Larry Gura has been superb to this point of the ball game. The pitch. Ball high, ball one. He has made some absolutely great pitches in this contest. He has given all you could ask, and then some. The pitch again to Baylor. Just missed outside. Now 2-0 on Baylor. Gura got behind Dennis and Bando, then got him. Red guards the line at third. The outfield deep and around the left. Baylor hitting 248. Gura set. Here comes the 2 0 pitch. Fastball. This ball three. So with two out of nobody on, Gura's falling behind on Baylor. 3 0. He has walked one man. He's hit a man. He has given two hits. Gura set. 3-0 to Don Baylor. Strike a fastball, and Baylor taking all the way at 3-1. and one. Baylor steps out of the batter's box for a moment to think it over. Now he's back in. Larry Gura ready. Here comes the 3-1 pitch. Fly ball. Left field. Tompo catch charging. Still coming. He makes the catch, and the inning's over. So Gura puts him down one, two, three in the seventh. He gets tennis, Bando, and Baylor. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. Larry Gura has been superb, and we go to the eighth, the Royal four, and he A's nothing. A poll of writers watching Muhammad Ali's controversial 15-round unanimous decision over Ken Norton in their heavyweight championship fight Tuesday night from ringside confirmed one thing. The science of boxing is not very exact, at least as far as scoring a boxing match. Milton Richmond, the sports editor for United Press International, scored the fight 8-7 for Norton. Steve Wilstein of UPI had it 8-7 for Ollie, while Ken Rosenberg and Fred Dunn, also among those covering the fight for UPI, had it the other way around, 8-7 in favor of Norton. The Associated Press scored it 9-6 for Ollie. New York Times columnist Red Smith scored the fight 10-5 in favor of Norton, but his colleague on the paper, Dave Anderson, scored it 8-7 for Ollie. Two New York Post writers, Leonard Lewin and Paul Zimmerman, saw Ollie winning the bout, but a third had Norton taking the fight. Right now, let's pause for station identification. This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service. In the eighth inning, it's Brett McRae and Mayberry for the Royals. Royals in front, four to nothing. Dan Bonson, the work for the A's to the eighth, and once again, here's Denny. Hi, Fred. George Brett is none for three, but he has one of the Royal RBIs. He drove in a run with the ground ball to second back in the third inning. Royals got one run in the second, two in the third, and one in the fifth on Amos Otis' 18th home run of the year. Van Bronson pitches to George Brett. Strike called outside corner, 0-1. Royals, four runs, eight hits, no errors. The A's, no runs, two hits, and one error. Bronson to Brett. Change outside, one ball, one strike. Al McRae will follow Brett, and then John Mayberry. Top of the eighth, Royals, 5-4. The pitch on the way. 
High fly ball, deep left. Rudy fading back, has plenty of room, makes the catch. One away. Brett flies out, so George 0 for 4. And the batter, Hal McCray. Hal, one out of three. Singled and came around to score in the second. Paul Mitchell started for the A's. Lynn Brad relieved in the third. Bonson came out in the sixth. For the Royals, Larry Gura all the way. Hal McCray takes over but low. Ball one. Hal single in the second, giving him 173 hits for the year. Pitch over his head. Bonson, a breaking ball that didn't bend at all. Two balls, no strike. Nobody on, one away. 2-0, the count to Hal McCray. The A's right-hander ready, rocks and deals. Fastball, nope, back to the pitcher. That should be easy. Thompson takes his time, throws to first, and there are two out. That'll bring up John Mayberry. John singled in the second, walked in the sixth, and rolled out to the second baseman in the third inning. We mentioned earlier both Royal home runs against the A's this year have been hit off Stan Bonson. At least until Otis homered off Lindblad in the third inning of this ball game. And John has one of those. He takes the ball, 1-0. Oh. One ball, no strikes. Signal given, here's the pitch to John. It's over but low, 2-0. and oh. and no strikes. Royals batting in the top of the eighth. Bonson deals. John hits one into a shallow left center. Bill North on the move makes the catch to retire the side. So the Royals are down one, two, three. The A's come to bat in the bottom of the eighth. Royals four, Oakland nothing. Tennessee football coach Bill Battle, who came into this football season facing what many consider a make-or-break year in his coaching career, will meet with sports writers Thursday morning to try to end speculation about his future. He said he's calling the news conference to clear the air, but he gave no details on what he had in mind for that 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight meeting. Already, one veteran writer, F.M. Williams of the Tennessean in Nashville, has predicted Battle will be finished unless he wins all eight of his remaining games. Most others haven't been quite as strong in their dire predictions for the 34-year-old native of Birmingham, Alabama, who played for the Crimson Tide and coached at Al uh, Oklahoma and West Point before coming to the Vols. But there's no doubt he's in trouble. In his six seasons as head coach, Battle has never had a losing season. He's gone to bowl games five times and has won four of those. But the last two seasons have been unhappy ones for Vol fans, 7-3-2 and in 74 and 7-5 and last year with surprise losses to North Texas State and Vanderbilt, and the Vols have been nowhere near competitive with arch-rival Alabama. And so, as is the case with coaches in almost any other major college or professional sport, the old question never goes away. What have you done for me lately? And so far, Bill Battle can only answer that question by saying, not too much. bottom of the eighth, they are clearing the Royals' bullpen. The fans down the right field line behind the Royals' bullpen, as they were two nights ago, are getting rowdy. And Whitey Herzog has gone down the right field line and is pulling his troop back toward the Royal dugout. Some security people are now in the area. Of course, the Royals' bullpen is going to work. Mark Littell and Stephen Gorey will throw. The A's coming to bat in the bottom of the eighth. Larry Gora has gone further than he has all season. Into the bottom of the eighth is the starter. This is only his second start, and he has been a magnificent pitcher. Well, Denny, a bottle just flew out of the stands. It went right by Mark Lapel down there. I tell you what, there's a word for this. That word is foot. And you can put a capital B on it. The way the Oakland fans down there are acting. There was a solid glass bottle of which by Mark Lapel this. Larry Gura pitching to Cordell Washington, and he fouls it out of play. Larry had worked that pitch in on Washington fans in the count 0-1. Then Gura is not throwing at the moment. Steve is kind of monitoring the crowd. 
kind of protecting Mark LaSalle, as it were. Claudel Washington, none for one, hit by a pitch ball. Last ball from Gura is high. One ball, one strike. The Royals, four runs, eight hits. The A's, no runs, two hits. The Royals trying to clinch at least a tie for the Western Division title. Swung and he missed. Gura's fastball, and Washington starting on his way. One and two. Left-hander against left-hander. The wind in the pitch. Third ball, foul back to the screen. One ball, two strikes. Nobody on, nobody out. Ron Fairley will be next. Gura's pitch. Flight foul and out of play. Third base side. And a good catch by a youngster in the mezzanine section. The team prepared. He had a glove and he just stared it. He was in the right place at the right time. And the crowd reacting to his catch. Gura's one-two pitch. Brown ball. Frank White now in the game. Oh, and the ball under his glove. it under his glove, so Washington at first with nobody out. It will be a base hit. Hit number three for the A's. Frank White just inserted for Cookie Rojas as a defensive major. It was a do or die play. Frank had to charge that hard with Washington's speed. Now Ron Fairley, none for two. Bouncing ball to Mayberry. He goes to Potek. Out at second. Potek to Mayberry. It's a double play. 3-6-3. Three, three. Mayberry to Potek to Mayberry. So the Rockles turn over the double play. Two out in the bottom of the eighth. Base is empty. And the batter, Phil Garner. Garner singled. He got the first hit off Larry Gora back in the third inning. And he lined out John Mayberry. Diving to his right to make a good play in the sixth inning. the second double play turned over by the Royals. Bando grounded into a 5-4-3 double play to end the fourth inning. Bill Garner, right hand batter. Larry Gura, ready and deal. Curve is low. One ball, no strike. The Royals executed that double play very well, knowing the speed of Ron Fairley, or lack thereof. They handled the ball very carefully. Larry throwing a breaking ball and he burrowed it down into the ground in front of the plate. Two balls, no strike. Galen Crisco and Whitey Herzog keeping a very, very close eye on Larry Gura now. Bottom of the eighth, four nothing Royals. Latell cranking it up in the bullpen. Two and zero to Phil Garner. North would be next. Ball three, three and zero. Oh. Larry has walked only one man. He walked tennis in the fourth inning. He has hit a batter. He has one strikeout. And he has scattered three singles. The 3-0 pitch. Strike. He just aimed it right down the middle. Three and one. Garner may take another pitch. Now time out for the moment. Something has come flying out of the stands in right field. Allen's over to retrieve it. Well, it was just a ball that got away from the Royals' bullpen, too, is what it was. So I had to go toward the right field corner. Now it's set to go. Three balls and a strike. Nobody on, two out. The 3-1 pitch to Garner. Hit hard on fast contact in the left field. So Garner has half the A's hit. And here's Bill North. Bill is 0 for 3. Hit the ball hard his last time up. He flied out to deep right center. Al Collins ran it down. He's also flied to right and flied to center. So Bill none for three. The switch hitter on the right side against the south ball, Larry Gura. Larry came into this game with an ERA of 2.79 and three wins, no losses. And he has pitched a gem tonight so far. North, fly ball, right center, Otis signals, I'll take it, he's there, he's got it, and that ends the bottom of the eighth.
No runs. Two hits. A double play. One man left. What a pitcher Larry Gura has been through eight innings. The score after eight. Royals four. A's nothing. The new athletic director at Georgia Tech, Doug Weaver, says that the school has proven it can play big-time college football as an independent, but he says he's not closing his mind to someday rejoining a conference. The 45-year-old Weaver, who replaced the legendary Bobby Dodd four months ago, had a crammed course on Southern athletics since his uh, football background was centered primarily in the Midwest, and he doesn't have all the answers yet. But attendance has been down at Tech's Grand Field recently from the glory years of the 60s, and Weaver acknowledges that he's been told that one of the reasons is that Tech is not in the league. Of course, Tuffer Rogers' jackets also got off to an unimpressive start this year, losing to South Carolina and Pittsburgh and tying Clemson. And that's another old saw in sports. The best promotion in the world is a winning club. Regardless whether it's football, basketball, or anything else, you've got to win to bring the folks in most of the time. We go to the ninth. Royals four, A's nothing. The totals through eight. Royals four runs, eight hits, no air. The A's no runs, four singles, and one air. Al Collins will lead off, then Frank White, and John Wapit. Fred, we've been talking about Larry Gura, and rightly so. The Royals getting Larry one run in the second, two in the third, and one in the fifth. There is one name we have neglected, and that would be Royals catcher John Wapin. What a job he's done. Well, he's done a tremendous job of calling this game. I say it's all been there tonight so far, Denny. Defense, hitting, the power, and the outstanding job by Larry Gura. This is only the 25th game for John Wapin. Fifth to Collins, fifth to the little looping liner in Campanaris, and very shallow left makes the catch. So Collins got on one pitch, and Frank White bats for the first time. Frank hitting 231. He has two homers, 46 RBIs. Then I'll go back to something Marty Patton said on our pregame show. He said, I made a mistake last night. We lost a tough ball game, one or nothing, but I somehow had a feeling that what happened last night set the tone for something for us tonight. The pitch to Frank Clyde is over the glow. One ball, no strike. Well, Marty is sure right through eight innings. Frank just went into right field. Don Baylor positioned well to his left a couple of steps. And he tucks it away. Two Royals are gone in the top of the ninth. And here is the aforementioned John Wapin. Duke is 0 for 3. But that doesn't tell the story. Larry Gura's totals do. No runs, four hits allowed, all singles. One strikeout, one walk. Wapin takes a strike on one. No balls and a strike. Bonson ready and deals. Fastball missed outside. One and one to Wapin. Top of the ninth, four to nothing Royals. Looking ahead to the A's ninth, Campanaris, Rudy Tennis, if anybody gets on, Pando. The A's trailing by a grand slam home run. One ball, one strike. Base is empty, two out. Bonson to Wappen. Foul ball back to the screen. He had a good cut at a fastball on the inside part of the plate. Two strikes and a ball. A royal victory would reduce the magic number to one. The one-two pitch. A high breaking ball, two balls, two strikes. John, right hand batter. Bonson leaning in, reading sign. Stand ready in the two-two pitch on the way. High and tight, ball three, three and two. That project would be next. The Royals will be home on Friday night. And if they win here tonight, they could win it all on Friday night, and you'll want to be there. Ground ball, right side. Garner, the second baseman, on the edge of the outfield draft to throw out Watson. So here it is. We go to the bottom of the ninth. The score, Royals 4, A's nothing. The fourth no-hitter of the 1976 P- uh, baseball season was pitched on Wednesday as John Montefusco, backing up his boats with a blazing fastball and pinpoint control, 
pitched the fourth no-hitter of the Major League season and the first of his career in a 9 nothing win by San Francisco over Atlanta. Bonifusco, who's 16 and 14, struck out four and walked only one. That was Jerry Royster who led off the fourth. The last time Bonifusco had faced the Braves was on August 6th, and he predicted that Willie Montanez would not get a base hit off him the rest of the year, and he was right about that. Bonifusco was the National League Rookie of the Year in 1975 when he was 15 and 9. The first four batters to face Montefusco all hit fly balls to the outfield, and then the next five hit ground balls before that uh, walk to Royster in the fourth. So John Montefusco of San Francisco, a no-hitter, as the Giants beat the Braves 9 to nothing. The Royals' bullpen is active as we go to the bottom of the ninth. It is do or almost die for the A's. Bert Campanaris, Joe Rudy, Gene Dennis, Mark Patel, and Stephen Dory are throwing in the Royals' bullpen. Larry Dura has allowed four singles. In only one inning, the A's, do the A's have more than one hit? Campanaris, one out of three, a six-inning single. Fred even as the bag is third. Campanaris, Tan, and Wilbur. Here's the pitch. Outside, ball one. The big crowd here trying to stir something up. The 1-0 pitch on the way. High, ball two, 2-0. Two oh. The A's, while they have been champions, have always been an outstanding ninth inning team. Come from behind, they do, as well as any team. Strike two and one. Dura has walked only one. He walked tennis in the fourth. He has but one strikeout. He got Bando in the seventh. The two-one pitch to Campanaris. High and outside, ball three, three and one. We mentioned in the eighth inning, this is easily as far as Larry Dura has gone. And he has to be a little weary. Strike two call, three and two. So Larry has gone as far as he can with Campanaris. Here's the windup. The three-two pitch down the way. A little tap from along third. Score off the mound. He's got it. Throw to first in time. And what did we tell you a couple of innings ago about Larry Gura's fielding prowess? He bounced off the mound towards third base. Grabbed the ball. Planted the foot. And fired a strike to John Mayberry to get the speedy Campanaris. Well, mound towards third base. Grabbed the ball. Planted the foot. And fired a strike to John Mayberry to get the speedy Campanaris. There was no margin for error by Gura there. So went away, and here's Joe Rudy. Dora has handled Rudy so far. Joe has popped up, grounded out, and flied to right field. So important to get the leadoff man, and Tampa just now entering the A's dugout. One away in the ninth. Four to nothing Royal. Dora to Rudy. Popped up. Right field. Collins to his right. Calls for it. Two away. Dora within one out. within one out of making the magic number one and clinching at least the tie. Bouncing ball foul. No balls and a strike. The A's winning the first two games of the series. The Royals watching their lead just whittle day after day after day. And with their backs to the wall, Larry Gura has uncorked a masterpiece so far. Going inside, one ball, one strike. Base is empty, two out in the bottom of the ninth. Four to nothing, Royal. Dura has pitched a four-hit shutout. Allowed four singles, two by Garner. Tennis takes high, two and one. Royals are playing tennis to full. Here's the pitch. Popped up. Down the right field line. Who wants it? Mayberry follows territory. And look at Larry Dura, and look at that Royal dugout. Dura being mobbed by Waffen, and now the entire Royal team. 
The Royals have friends that lead the tie at the Western Division title. The A's dejectedly walking back to their clubhouse. They can no longer do anything about the Royals. All the Royals have to do is win one game. Simpson has just decked a fan who came out of the stands. A couple of youngsters after some taps. And all that youngster got for his trouble was a punch in the nose. Well, the A's have been punched in the stomach. Larry Gora and the Royals have turned back the A's. The magic number is one. And the Royals can win it all now on Friday night at home against the Minnesota Twins. Okay, so Kansas City finally, and boy, I'll tell you, a pretty nervous ball club. I don't care what anybody tells you. They had to be thinking and looking behind them a bit as they took the field at Oakland on a four-game losing streak and losing two straight to the A's. And uh, Oakland is the kind of ball club that's used to this kind of pressure. They're used to getting into situations like this, and they're used to getting out of them. But it doesn't look like they're going to get out of this one. But time will tell. It's certainly not over yet. But Kansas City has at least clinched a tie for the American League West Championship by beating Oakland 4 to nothing. 